So here we are in the shack to have a close look at the IC705. It's a shack in a box that's quite a small box and a box that you can take anywhere with you because uh, this is battery powered or you can connect it to an external supply. And it's amazing considering that this little radio will cover all of the HF bands and also does VHF and UHF and D-Star is how small the battery pack is. Look at that. That's lithium iron battery technology moving on all the time. So the first job, of course, once you've got it out of the box is to clip the battery into place, which is a pretty straightforward process. It's just a click in job. And uh, we're pretty much ready to go once we've connected up a few other bits and bobs. So let's just have a look at what we can connect to the radio. And we'll start, of course, with the connector for the antenna. And of course, we've only got the one antenna socket here for VHF, UHF and all the HF bands. So if you want to have both antennas connected at the same time, uh, you're going to need a diplexer. Um, socket wise, well, the first one that we find on the back here is the speaker mic socket, which is hidden behind this little rubber tab that clicks in. It just gives it a, a little bit of weatherproofing, stop the rain going in the sockets. Uh, this is where your miniature SD card goes. And uh, people who've used the IC7300 or the 9700 will know how useful that memory card is for being able to program in all your memories and share those settings with other people who've got the same radio and various other bits and bobs that you can save onto the card. So when we go around the other side, we've got a 13.8 volt DC socket. And when you apply the 13.8 volts, your output power on this goes up to 10 watts running on the battery as we say, it's only five watts. And there is an alternative way that you can power it. Uh, by the way, if it's plugged in here, you're going to be charging the radio at the same time that you're using it, or it will charge through a USB connector. So there's the miniature end of the USB connector there. And then also that provides a connection to a computer. If you want to connect it to a computer and the socket above that is for your Morse key. I'll put the flap down there. And then the other side here, another two sockets, and these two jack sockets, one is for the connection of an external tuner. So if you're going to be using an external antenna tuner, that will be the connector that uh, automatically controls that. And that top socket is for use with the linear amplifier. That's the ALC send for the linear. And that's pretty much it as far as the sockets are concerned, except for this lug here for your ground connection. And then on the bottom, a variety of holes. Uh, these four would be for using on a car mount or some kind of stand that you could have in your shack, or perhaps you're going to customize your own box for carrying it around in. Uh, you could fix it in firmly with that. As we'll see later on, I can produce a purpose made carry bag for this radio, which is great if you're taking it out portable. And that comes with this little bolt here which is actually used to make sure it's fixed into the bag so it doesn't drop out while you're hiking up your mountain. But it's quite handy in the shack because if I put that in the bottom there, like so, when I put it down in front of me, it sort of makes a nice little stand for the radio so that it angles it just right for you to use it. Right, let's give it a go and put it through its paces. First thing we're gonna to need to do is uh, plug in a microphone. So as we said, we're gonna use the speaker on the front of the radio. So uh, what we're going to do is just plug in the microphone and we need to plug in an antenna. Now, uh, because we've got a BNC connector and like a lot of you, hmm, PL259 on the end of the antenna cable. So we'll pop that on there. There we go. Okay, let's power her up. Action. So you see in the screen that came up there, we had a check of the battery volts. It also put my call sign up because I put that in there earlier. So that's very handy. And at the top of the screen here, you'll see there's a little picture of a satellite flashing away. What's that all about? Well, that, oh, it stopped flashing now. And that's because it has acquired a GPS signal. So this radio has GPS built in. And the first thing that happens when you switch it on, if you've got the GPS activated, is it will try and acquire a GPS signal. And we'll look at that a little bit later on when we go through the menus, but the fact it stopped flashing tells us it's acquired that. Just to the right of the satellite, you can see there's a standard Wi-Fi icon, which shows that the radio has connected to the Wi-Fi here in the house. And that means that I can use it on D-Star to access D-Star through the internet. We'll get to that a little bit later on. 
So before we start experimenting with the touchscreen, let's just go round the buttons round the outside because I think the great thing about this radio is it's quite intuitive to use. And as with the IC7300 and the IC9700, anybody who's used those, uh, you'll find that the menu system, the touchscreen system, is very similar. And also, it doesn't do that thing where you go into a menu that takes you into another menu that's into another menu, where you've got trees of menus, so finding a particular setting could be hidden somewhere way down that tree, which used to be how these menu systems worked. This is so much more straightforward. And we've got a few buttons around the outside that are going to be important to start with. So this is the AF volume control, and it helpfully tells us that when we turn it up. There we go. And if we press it in once, it gives us a couple of options because we can also, by um, touching one of those two, adjust the RF gain. I think we might as well turn that up as high as it goes. And uh, this is the squelch here. Now, I know we don't need squelch on HF, but if we did, we just turn that up and uh, adjust the squelch accordingly. So across the other side here, there's a, a button called multi that uh, has multiple functions. So if we press it in once, we've now got a variety of things we can choose from. The top one is the RF power, which as you can see is on 50% at the moment. I can turn it down, there we go, but I can only turn it up as far as 50%, and the reason for that is because we're operating on the battery, but if we were plugged into an external supply, then that would adjust all the way up to 100%. When the bands get crowded, it's very handy to be able to either narrow the IF bandwidth or shift it around slightly, and that's where the twin passband tuning comes in, because one click on this button uh, gives us a little picture that pops up here, and it stays there while we're adjusting it. So if we start with number one, we could uh, narrow the bandwidth by moving that one way, and then if we clicked on number two, and move that one the other way, we've narrowed the IF bandwidth, or we could actually shift them both to one side of um, the frequency that we're on. And then going around the rest of the switches um, down the bottom here, the menu option here gives us a whole other range of things that we can look at and adjust. So for example, if we hit scope, we get uh, the scope that we see there, but we could go audio and uh, we're getting the audio display and that will show your transmitted audio as well as the receive audio. And uh, our voice is going to be our pre-recorded voice messages, so we can record those and those would go onto our memory card if it was in there. Now, this is an interesting one. The next one is meter, which is very useful because if you touch that one, you get all the meters up on the screen at once. Really useful when you're setting up, for example, FT8 and uh, you want to see what your power output is, but you also want to see how the ALC is doing, so you're setting the levels up just right. Uh, this button is for memories, so this is where you can set up your memory groups, and uh, you can have a hundred different memory groups, and there's 500 standard memory channels, so uh, pretty impressive array of memories that you get on this radio. Um, record for recording um, stuff that's coming in off air, and also your various messages, and then the set menu, uh, which takes us into the more complicated stuff, so the Bluetooth setup, you can set this up to work with a Bluetooth headset, which is going to be brilliant because you can have the radio in the backpack on your back and you can be hiking up the hill and uh, talking on the radio as you go using the Bluetooth. And I imagine there'll be a lot of this happening actually out portable with FT8 uh, or back in the shack, the connectors. This is a very important setting here and you can go through all the various things you need to do uh, to set it up to talk to an external computer, which, as we've said, you can just plug in with the USB lead uh, so that you can get it to do digital modes and various other things in relation to the different things that can be plugged into it. And then there's a second page of these which takes us into things like the digital voice memory um, and setting up the digital voice gateway, which is another thing that we can use this radio for when we're connected through the internet because we can access the D-Star system worldwide through the net, through this radio, using it in terminal mode. Uh, sending pictures digitally and GPS. Now, if we click on that and click on GPS information, that will show us which satellites we've acquired and it tells us exactly where we are. Now, one thing is, of course, if you're using the GPS, if it's switched on all the time, it is going to be using some of your battery power. And when you're up on the top of that hill, battery conservation is going to be important. But if you are using D-Star, you might want to be sending out that location information or be able to just look at the screen and check it for yourself if you're on HF to give that information out. But what you can do is a neat little trick is if you go to GPS set 
and go to manual position, tap that, and that shows us where we are. Then if we hit the quick button down here, which is very handy for doing quick things in various modes, we can go capture from GPS. And now it's captured our location and it will remember that. And we can then turn off the continually monitoring GPS. And I have to say it works really well. We're indoors in the shack here and it locked on with no problem at all. Down this side here, we've got our RIT button. So uh, we can do RIT on receive, or if we press it again, we're doing RIT on transmit. Uh, XFC, if you're operating on split, if you press the XFC, you can just listen on your transmit frequency and make sure uh, it's clear or hear what's going on there. Uh, the M pad, if you touch on that, uh, that takes you in to your quick memo pad frequencies that you've saved, which are really handy because you can actually, when you're operating on a frequency, they just hold that button in and it will memorize it and the associated settings uh, to your memory pad. And at the bottom, we've got scan. Well, it does what it says on the tin. I've got no memories programmed in at the moment. So if I hit scan, it's offering me some band scans where I can set some band edges and scan between those and off we go. In the shack or out and about with this, we've got a nice front facing, very loud loudspeaker, which will be good for operating on a noisy, windy mountain top. And just next to the speaker here is a light sensor, which adjusts the brightness of the screen. Although it does auto adjust, it's got a very clever sensor just here, which is checking the light level. If in the unlikely event, for those of you based in the UK, you get some sunny weather while you're out doing your mountain topping. So it's pretty easy to find your way round even without picking up the manual. And then for some of the finer detail, then you are going to have to have a look in the manual. So we pretty much drive the radio in general use through the touch screen. That's how we're going to change frequency. We're going to change mode, how we can see exactly what's going on on the radio at that moment in time. To select the band we want to operate on, it's simply a matter of touching the megahertz frequency here and up pops the band stacking register. So that means you've got memories for each of the bands you're on. So if you're operating on a particular mode at a particular frequency, it will remember that the next time you tap on that band to go into it. And you can just tap on whichever of the bands you need to go to. So we'll just look at HF for a minute or two. And also you will have noticed that it offers us FM radio here. So um, if you fancy a bit of radio too, she's from just along the road from yeah. there. Oh, Ken Bruce. Uh, so you're going to have that. Or you might want to go straight to the airband, which is very useful indeed. And that's the other thing about this. It made me realise what a great general coverage receiver it is. It's got great HF coverage and great VHF and UHF coverage. So there'll be a lot of other stuff that you'd be able to listen to other than just the amateur bands. I won't go into all the ins and outs of setting it up for D-Star because of course there's a couple of ways we can do that as we've mentioned through my wireless LAN so we could go in uh, using the internet as a gateway into the D-Star network and that does take a little bit of setting up. Now I've got an open spot that's already configured for D-Star so all I need to do is just put us into 70 SEMS and 431100 is the frequency my open spot is on and then we just change the mode to DV and we should be ready to go. There we go. A pip to say we're in. Uh, this is Golf Zero Foxtrot Golf X-Ray G0FGX. Golf Zero Foxtrot Golf X-Ray. Listening. Yeah, Roger. Call sign Mike Zero Fox X-Ray Bravo. Uh, Western Supermare. Uh, name is Andreas. Yep, your audio sounds great, Andy. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for helping us to do a quick demonstration of the D-Star capabilities on this radio. So have a, a great afternoon and thanks for the contact. Golf Zero, Fox, Trot, Golf X-Ray, Helston, Cornwall, clear. Well, that went better than expected. Normally, when we're showing you a radio and I put out a CQ call, nobody comes back to us. So it was great that we were able to get a QSO on D-Star there through the open spot and just show you how that works. And the configurations for setting up the D-Star in terminal mode, if you're linked in through your Wi-Fi, there's a bit more detail to that. We won't go into that now. In fact, there's a lot more detail about this radio because I think we've only really scratched the surface just to show you the kind of things you can do, and I think to get over to you how easy it is to operate. And I know I keep going on about this, but this lack of complicated menu trees, the fact that you can find everything you need, either from the buttons around the edge or on the touch screen, and you don't have to dig a long way to find the particular setting you're looking for, does make it really easy, pretty intuitive radio to use. 
I can remember how excited I was when the IC706 came out, and that's over 20 years ago, well over 20 years ago, and you got your first sort of shack in a box there that went uh, HF through to VHF and UHF, and you could have it in your car or in your shack. And then we were really excited when the 7300 came out because now we've got SDR technology and all the extras that that brings you in, in being able to look at the band scope, see where the signals are and jump on them. And you've got the benefits of SDR, but in a box, which is what us radio amateurs like really with proper knobs and buttons. And now the whole thing has got smaller and we can take all of that 7300 wonderfulness with us wherever we go and it's got VHF and UHF and those extra things like the GPS and the, the Wi-Fi compatibility. I think this is a lot of radio in one small package. Now, I know you're all too polite to say that I could do with the exercise, but actually I could. So I need to get out there, do a little bit of walking and I can take the IC705 with me. And it gives me an opportunity actually just to mention one other bit of kit that I can make that goes with this radio. And that's this LC192 carry case, which is designed for the radio. Big compartment down here that you can put your batteries in, antenna cables, all your other bits and bobs that you might want to carry with you. And in the top here, a compartment made just for the radio. There she is, all ready to go. And they've even thought of a hole in the top of here, a little flap to let the aerial out. So I think what I ought to do is get her strapped on the back and get out there and uh, do some testing of the IC705 as it should be done in the great outdoors. Ollie, come on, walkies. Come on. Good boy.